podcasting, The Latest Frontier. These are the episodes of a Catch as Catch Can podcast. It's continuing mission to explore strange, nerdy topics, to chat about sports, movies, sci-fi, and so much more, to boldly pod where this nerd has gone before. Captain's Log, pod date 0707.19. On this episode of To Boldly Pod, we're going to take a quick little gander at the celebration of the 4th of July in a historical aspect. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about tanking in sports or baseball more specifically. We're also going to discuss Bigfoot, and we're going to have some fun with a 4th of July-esque to boldly pod question. All of that and what's in the news coming up on this episode of To Boldly Pod. So, Scotty, set phasers on stun. Engage. Now, most people that listen to this podcast or are friends with me on social media know that I sort of have this keen interest in, to quote Fox Mulder from the X-Files, things of a very paranormal bouquet. I enjoy the paranormal. I'm interested in the paranormal. I want to learn more about the paranormal, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I willy-nilly believe everything that is claimed to be the paranormal. On the contrary, I think that I actually tend to disbelieve or debunk more things that are claimed to be paranormal than most people, and that doesn't mean that I don't still strive to learn more or actually do believe in certain things that are paranormal and that stems from experiences that I've had throughout my life that I've talked on in the past about and one of the bigger things in the paranormal field that is really polarizing to people is the subject of Bigfoot, whether or not Bigfoot actually exists. It's sort of the 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 one thing that is your fifty one to forty nine percent thing in the paranormal meeting. It's almost a fifty fifty whether p- people believe it or they don't believe it. And within the subject of Bigfoot, there is one thing that most people generally go to, and that's the famous Patterson-Gimlin film of what appears to be Bigfoot shot in 1967. Now, this past week, my buddy Rob had sent me a YouTube video of a guy who took the Patterson-Gimlin film from 1967 and did sort of a modern technology updating on it and him and I sort of discussed it. He was going to join me on the podcast but being the holiday weekend you know everybody is busy and I totally understand so at some point Rob will join me on a later podcast and we'll get more in detail on things of the paranormal nature with Rob. (laughs) I I have no idea where that voice came from. But anyways, he shared this video with me, which I'll add link to the page for this podcast if you want to take a look at it too. And it kind of shows more close-up, cleaned-up video 
with modern technology of the Patterson Gimlin film and whether or not Bigfoot is real. And the guy goes into sort of detail about certain things that a lot of us have heard before, like, you know, muscle movement and stuff like that. And that, that's all irrelevant to me as far as the whole process go. What what I have steadfastly said about the Patterson-Gimlin film, even as far back to being in my youth when I first seen it, is, and it's more cogent today with 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 how technology can create fake videos and whatnot but my point is in 1967 when that film was was created or taken is you didn't have the availability of special effects like people have today and what I mean by that is Hollywood had it yes but this wasn't a Hollywood production this was just two guys in California out in the woods with an eight millimeter camera so the technology then didn't exist for two regular Joes to be sitting here like I am right now in front of a computer to be able to create something that looks so authentic that people for, let's face it, 50 plus years have debated whether it's real or not. I mean, take for example, it's, it's hard to believe much, if any, UFO footage that we see today because it's so easy to sit down in front of a computer and visually create a UFO sighting. But with the Patterson-Gimlin film, again, it was from 1967, so it wasn't possible for two regular Joes to create a video or a movie that became the famous Patterson-Gimlin film. Now, one thing about this current cleanup of it but that I will post here again is it really cleans up and shows you again the muscle mass and stuff like that which is here nor there but to me I think what it does prove is it shows that it's really not a man in a suit I mean can I conclusively say that it's not? No, because I wasn't there and I wasn't part of those two guys that filmed it in 1967 because, you know, I wasn't alive in 1967. But to me, and this is just my personal belief, so, I mean, people can believe it whether they do or not, is I honestly think that is some kind of creature whether it be Bigfoot or some kind of gorilla or or whatever but I honestly believe that that film which a lot of people have tried to debunk throughout the years and they haven't been able to conclusively debunk it so it's this the whole thing with the paranormal unless you have a personal experience is all really subjective but you know what what in this world isn't subjective when it comes to people's beliefs I mean take politics for example you have Democrats and Republicans you have conservatives and liberals and you know what each side thinks the other side's beliefs are subjective so within belief you have subjective so, subjectively, do I think Bigfoot is real? Yeah, I kind of think he is. Do I know that for 100% concrete empirical fact? No, because I have never seen or experienced Bigfoot. But what I do think is the Patterson-Gimlin film captured something real, captured something unexplainable, and something very intriguing. Maybe you can take a look at the video I'll post 
along with this podcast, and you can give me your thoughts, and we'll re-examine it later on down the road. So it's 4th of July weekend, and that being said, a lot of us have a long weekend. A lot of us are celebrating the 4th of July here in America, and a lot of us are shooting off fireworks and having cookouts and barbecues or going camping, just enjoying the weekend. And in no way before people hear this, am I stepping on the 4th of July holiday whatsoever. I'm just sort of offering up a little bit of historical knowledge to everybody. Now, the 4th of July is a federal holiday that commemorates the Declaration of Independence On July 4th, 1776, the Continental Congress declared that the 13 American colonies will no longer be subject or subordinate to the monarch of Britain, and we are now united, free, and independent states. Now, the Congress had voted to secede two days earlier, but it was not declared until July 4th. That's the the history book version of the actual event. When act when in in actuality the Declaration of Independence was voted on on July second, but most historians will note that it actually wasn't signed by the Continental Congress until almost a month later, on August second. 1776 and if you read the historians or read the actual diaries of Thomas Jefferson and John Adams you will note that neither of them two of the authors of the Declaration of Independence were even in session in the Continental Congress on July 4th 1776 but it's irrelevant July 4th is the date so that's what we'll go with so hope everybody has a safe and happy fourth of july and i'll humorously mind you humorously close with this from a letter from john adams to his wife abigail the second day of july 1776 will be the most memorable epoch in the history of america I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the Great Anniversary Festival. You're pretty close, Mr. Adams. Just two days off. It is what it is. History can always be revisited and debated. Because you know what? None of us were there. None of us actually know. Regardless, have a good 4th of July weekend, everybody. Well, it's 4th of July weekend, and about a week ago, I asked a question on social media, sort of preparing for this weekend. I think it's a fun little to boldly pod question to sort of celebrate or be inclusive to the 4th of July weekend. And it's simple. It's which condiment do you eliminate out of these possibilities and the off the the condiments you had to choose from are hot sauce ketchup a1 or steak sauce mustard barbecue sauce or miracle whip slash mayonnaise and i got a ton of great requests first of all before we even say that it this begins and ends for me with with miracle whip mayonnaise because yeah no thanks <laughs> But I got a ton of great responses from people. And I should have done it in sort of a poll fashion, but Kate said hot sauce. Kayla said mustard. Chris said hot sauce. Kimber said mustard, or excuse me, mayonnaise. Uh, Narek said ketchup. Butch said steak sauce. Deb said mayonnaise, except for in deviled eggs. So, yeah, I guess we're going to go with mayonnaise. John said hot sauce. 
Kelly said mustard. Jay said, well, actually, he didn't say anything. He asked me a question and never came out to answer. Kathy said hot sauce. Deb said hot sauce. Jenny said steak sauce. David said hot sauce. Do you sense a theme here? It's either going to be steak sauce or hot sauce. (laughs) Paul said, if it was Frank's, it would be a struggle, but it ain't, so... Peace out, hot sauce. (laughs) Marlene said hot sauce. Jeff said hot sauce. Jim said steak sauce. Gaynell said steak sauce or hot sauce. Tim said goodbye to barbecue sauce. Marty said hot sauce. Angela said mayonnaise. Kirk says mayonnaise. Mary Ann says barbecue sauce. Renee says hot sauce. Laura says hot sauce. Amy says hot sauce. Jennifer says mayonnaise. Darlene says hot sauce. Marty says steak sauce. Janet says hot sauce. Trish says hot sauce or steak sauce. Tiffany, hot sauce. Opie, hot sauce. Nikki, mayonnaise. Jody, Hot sauce or barbecue sauce. And Dennis said steak sauce. So I think the overall winner of this for the 4th of July barbecue is we're getting rid of the hot sauce. And then secondly, we're going to get rid of steak sauce, which the hell is wrong with you people? Steak sauce is fantastic. Get rid of the damn mayonnaise. But thank you all to everyone that answered that. I hope you had a fun and safe 4th of July weekend and I'll just close with this if you don't want your steak sauce just send it my way and you can have all the damn mayonnaise now we've talked about tanking before here on this podcast in relation to sports teams and whatnot. but my buddy Dave actually messaged me last night and we were talking about the or he was referring to the Detroit Tigers and he's like man Tigers are really bad bad and I'm like yeah they kind of are they're sort of rebuilding and I thought that was kind of the end of the conversation because we sort of got sidetracked on managers getting tossed out of games and whatnot but later on he he messaged and he's like, you would know more than I do because you pay closer attention, but why are they so bad? Is it just because they are rebuilding? And I told him, you know, the prospects that they have in the minors are not close to or ready to become major league players. The people that they have on the current roster aren't exactly performing the way that you would like or you would hope. They're not exactly what you would call a major league roster. And they've had a lot of injuries to their pitching staff. So sort of reshuffling pitchers in and out of the starting rotation hasn't helped. And they've also had players that they normally or have in the past counted on aren't exactly producing the way they would have hoped or expected and referring to Miguel Cabrera and Nicholas Castellanos. Now, there's been a lot of chat about Castellanos in the media and on sports talk about how he wants a new contract and the Tigers have stated, you know, they're not going to offer him one at this time. They'll talk at the end of the year. And it, it, that just, I think to me, and I could be totally wrong on this, but you would think somebody looking for a newer, bigger contract would be, the quote-unquote playing for their contract playing a lot better than they have. And it goes deeper with Castellanos than it does with just 
his inability to produce this year, but it's also the fact that they've mentioned they would like to move him to first base because in his tenure here, he's been a third baseman and he's been an outfielder and he hasn't really performed well at either of those positions. Apparently he's doing better. I'm not an expert to know on his actual gameplay, but his outfield experiment, he's been playing better. So now they were talking of making Miguel Cabrera an all-time DH, full-time DH, and be sort of conserve his body as much as possible and moving Castellanos to first, but to, to which at this point he had came, come out publicly and stated they want me to, to learn how to play first, then they need to give me a new contract. And that's sort of the standoff point to that. And I can understand where he's coming from in that aspect, but the other thing is he's looking to get paid. He's looking for a contract after this season. So you would think that he would do something to show, sort of show, not necessarily the Tigers, but maybe any other team that might be willing to sign him that he has abilities in and above the ones that he has now. But got myself a little sidetracked there, sorry. The point that I was trying to make to Dave is rebuilds, it seems nowadays are a lot more painful than they maybe used to be. Now you're sort of intentionally, but not intentionally, if you catch my drift there, losing, doing bad so you can build up your team from the bottom, if you will. Get as many draft prospects, get as many prospects, get as much collateral as you possibly can to then when you think you're ready, going ahead and going balls out, going 100% in, pushing all the chips in, going all in. And I think that's sort of good and bad in a way. I think it's good because you're going to get teams going for it. But on the flip side, you're not going to get teams going for it, if that makes any sense. What I mean by that is you're either going to have teams trying to win it all, or you're going to have teams that are trying to lose or not trying to win. And your middle of the road team that maybe might catch a fire and go on a run and surprise the world is probably a thing of the past. And to me, I think that's sad because if, and I know hockey is sort of the forgotten of the four major sports, but of, of, of one example hockey could show you is if you just get in, you've got a chance to win it all if you catch a spark, if you go on a run. And I think the other major sports are leaning more towards boom or bust when there is still hope, much like in hockey, that you might be a run-of-the-mill team, a middle-of-the-road team, but if you catch a few breaks, catch a spark, go on a run, you could possibly do it. Now, coming full circle on to what I started this whole rant about is, do I think the Tigers are close? Absolutely not. I mean, I could go to the game and probably have an entire section to myself. And that's sad because I remember in my youth that I would go to a Tiger game and the stadium would be fairly full. I won't say it was completely full, but it was a lot of people. And at that time, the Tigers were not very good. So is rebuilding hurting sports as far as a spectator angle goes? Or is it something that's just sort of 
the way of the sporting world. So to answer your question, Dave, yeah, they're bad. They're real bad. And it's probably going to be a few years before they're not so bad. But you know what? We can always hope. Fingers crossed. That's the best part of being a fan is you can always hope. If you have any thoughts about tanking or rebuilding or just want to rant about your favorite team, let me know on Facebook or Twitter at Too Boldly Pod. And in the news this week, this comes via Odie.com and is dated July 6, 2019 by Stoney Williams. The headline Instagram star and gamer model sells her own bath water. A British Instagram star, Belle Daphne, has come up with a new kind of gross way to make money. And we're not just throwing out the baby with the bath water. In fact, hold on to that bath water. Miss Daphne recently gave her 4 million viewers a chance to buy her $30 bath water. She sold out quick. She posted on the first two photos of herself in a tub in a bathing suit. I am now selling my bath water for all you thirsty gamer boys. Check out the new shop. I'm selling stuff for you. Now, Miss Daphne wrote a disclaimer in her shop stating that this water is not for drinking and should only be used for sentimental purposes. Now, being the complete reporter that I am, I went the extra five seconds to verify everything in this article was an actual article. And you know what? She does have an Instagram and she is selling her bath water for $30 a bottle. And she did sell it all. So, you know what? She's 19 years old. Good on her for making money. She is a very attractive young lady. But, you know, the hell is wrong with mankind. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Too Boldly Pod. I hope you enjoyed the program. If you have any thoughts about anything that we discussed, let me know on Facebook or Twitter at Too Boldly Pod. And coming up, In future podcasts, we're going to discuss music, music in general, music as far as the generations, and we're also going to discuss what science fiction in movies, in theaters, and books means to me. Now, as usual, I don't have a closer for this podcast, and I never really kind of ever sort of do. So, that being said, I'll just close with this. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Talk to all of you next time. WLLP Spock Rock Radio.